Here we are again. Knives. Every time with knives, right? I open the box with a big knife. You guessed it. It's an unboxing video. Ono. Ono sent me some stuff. Decided to do a little silver face look. Silver face, not yet banned. Yet. Operative word there. Uh, so let's just get into it. You know, what else can I do? Is my stomach hanging out here? I'm trying to stay skinny. I don't eat after six o'clock. What's my tone right now? I don't eat after six o'clock. Like I'm trying to sound like cool and contemplative. Is that what you say or do you say contemplative? Because I've usually heard contemplative. You know what the truth is? If that's a word that you're using in your daily vocabulary, asshole, the capital A. Just kidding. That's what I do, I do the self-deprecating humor. I'm okay with the acting, I'm, I'm acting a little bit now, I'm acting a little, is that inauthentic? You know, what is it? What is authenticity? I wanna talk, before I do the unboxing, let me talk about a few things I've been thinking about a lot. One, thank you to Lyo for this, because she kind of brought it to my attention. We have so much shame about eating. We eat a meal and we're like, oh God, I have something on my face. Or, um, you know, I don't want to look like a pig. I don't want to seem like a lady. I don't want to un act unladylike. I don't want to eat too much. Oh my God, I don't want this woman to think I'm a slob. There's a piece of napkin on my beard. I'm disgusting. We have so much shame about food, which is really fucked up because if you think about it, what is the most basic function of a, a human being? Like the thing you have to do, or you die, that's tiki. The cat, you know, uh, you have to eat. You have to eat so you get energy, otherwise you fucking die. So we have all this shame about it, it's really fucked up. It's fucked up that we've gotten to the point that we feel that way. And remember, I'm gonna tie this in with the next one. People like to think, oh, yeah, we're like animals. Boop, 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 boop. We're not like animals, we are animals. If you keep that in mind, is a cat ever going to be ashamed of uh, the way they eat? Or you know what? I've always felt this way. I'm not saying anything negative or derogatory about a mentally challenged person. In fact, I'm holding them in a higher light. Oftentimes, especially in high school, I would see a, a mentally challenged uh, kid eating and I would just have a certain feeling about them. Like I'm so envious of them for not having shame. Nobody either tried to pound shame into their head or Somebody tried and it just didn't take because they didn't have the capacity. Either way, and I know it sounds fucked up to say you can be a mentally challenged person, but I think you get what I'm meaning. Let's get to the next, so that's food. It's really fucked up, the idea. We just have so much shame about eating, it's so fucked up because we're animals and we eat. I could have just said that one sentence, but I wanted to explain myself. Secondly, shitting and pissing, okay? Shitting and pissing. We all do it, and it's so, it's so completely insane the way that we hide it and the shame we have about it. Think about this. Girls, I don't fart. Girls, I've known many girls who just say they don't fart. They don't do it. Or they won't shit if they're at your house. Or if you, you have to have some bathroom like way up, way upstairs, way down the hallway that's just theirs. They don't shit. Shitting is considered so unladylike. Of course, you have the opposite spectrum of that where it's fetishized. I'm not saying I'm interested. I'm just saying it exists. Come on, please. So, you have shitting and pissing. Think about this. Cat, a dog, an animal, a non-human animal, shits and pisses whenever they want. They just shit and they piss whenever they gotta go. I mean, yes, their cats are particular, they like a box. Dogs, they have their habits. And I suppose they even do, there are some animals who won't go to the bathroom if you're there bothering them, which I, is understandable. What I'm thinking specifically, precisely of is that you're in a park, maybe juggling, hashtag right here. You're juggling and you can't, you gotta take a piss. Oh, the bathrooms are closed, they're locked because it's a holiday or this park sucks or it's too late. Yeah, so the, the, you can't piss? Well, you could go, go, why don't you just go behind that tree? Oh, well, if you get seen, you might be uh, the newest member of the sex offender registry for public urination, uh, considered a uh, sex crime in many states. That's pretty fucked up. Because you think about it, it's like, again, an animal, it's like, even just having to hold it like in school and the teachers are like, can you hold it? Can you hold it? It's like, sure, but why should I? Why the fuck should I hold my, again, shitting, pissing, and eating. Let's stick with that. I know reproduction factors in there as the actual function of our species, arguably. 
with shitting and pissing, it's just like the idea that you ever have to wait or that you can't go. And it's like, yes, I acknowledge that we've evolved to the extent to where we're like, all right, guys, let's figure out a way to not step in piles of shit all the time. Yes, there's bacteria and disease, cleanliness, hygiene considerations. I understand all that. But if you take something like New York City, which is this miracle of civilization, it has this failure where it's, it's very challenging to find a place to take a piss. And that's just so fucked up to me. So I think about these things, sorry to give you the long philosophical intro about shit pissing, shitting, pissing, and eating. But I, I've just thought about them and it's it's odd to the point where I just, it really strikes me as odd anytime I have to shit or piss. And uh, you can't, you can't because you're in a car or you're because you're, maybe you're on a hiking trail. I mean, you got if you can't piss on a hiking trail, whatever we become. But let's get on with the unboxing. I said my goddamn piece. And of course, what am I doing with the knife already open? We know that I've got to uh, do it separately, so. You like my makeup look? I did it all by myself. Of course I did it. You know, I was smashing my, remember this trick? I was smashing my hand with a hammer on Instagram recently. All right, all right, I'll do the unboxing. This comes from Ono. Ono in Lorraine, Ohio, and he sent me a package before. He did, did it before and he's doing it again. Here's to you, Ono, thank you, I'm excited. Let's get this bad boy cracked open. Uh, uh, Sunday here, by the way, if you're watching this, that means it's a Monday, because my videos come out every Monday morning. I live in Utah. I live in Utah, now. that's true, I just make that up. Wow, this is already quite a package. Wowzers, wowzers. I mean, let me just show you if you can't see it. I think you can. Looking really crazy already, like a lot of stuff in here. The first thing I'm going to grab is a Sonic the Hedgehog Sea Breeze Air Freshener. Wow. EpicSense.com. This is, you got Sonic, you got uh, tails, knuckles, the pink haired girl. Oh, the two at the top. Son, the black Sonic has a different name. Can't remember any of their names. It might be so old it doesn't smell anymore. They're probably not manufacturing these anymore. I'm gonna guess, but still super cool. It's interesting. This product is not for sale and is made only for demo purposes by Bedowki and Research Inc. Utilizing Sega's intellectual properties under license by Sega, indicating to me that yes, in fact, this was not something that you'd be able to buy at a store. I'm, I'm gonna guess it was a, uh, a tie-in tchotchke item. Remember that word tchotchke? That they would give you if you bought, uh, you know, something Sonic related or Sega, even something from Sega, love it. Some books here. Shadowrun Nosferatu. Can't say I never heard of it. Let's read the, a little bit of the description. Saren Charmander. Shamander, it sounds like Charmander. Char, Char. A uh, rootless image and part-time shadow runner is on the run. First he flees New York hoping to find refuge in Europe, dot, dot, dot. From there, Shadow Run, a Nintendo game? Shadow Run's a Nintendo game? An original NES game, if I'm not mistaken? It's not related to Shinobi. Shadow Run, or is this the PC franchise related to Knights of the Templar and all that? I can't say, I can't remember. It looks cool, I love reading. I have to say I haven't read in since the move started, since I started leaving my last place. And I'm going, I need to start again. Um, I typically read a book a week. Um, this will hopefully be one of them soon. Neuromancer by William Gibson, the famous book that The Matrix is essentially based off of. Uh, William Gibson type of dude where some of the stuff becomes so abstract that you may not even know what's happening. This is notoriously a very, very complicated read. Although Bogdan, he's not gonna watch this, why would he? Bogdan uh, read Neuromancer, I think, or at least tried to. Um, oh no, I'm not gonna lie to you. I have this very same copy on my shelf. It's under a Jason Starr book. I'm planning to read it soon. Uh, it doesn't hurt me to have another copy. I'll give mine away and keep this one that you sent me since it means more to me now. Um, and I have the exact same edition printing and everything. And I, I love it. I love the way it looks. So thank you for that. Again, uh, William Gibson, Neuromancer, a little piece of trivia. The Gibson supercomputers in the movie Hackers, so named from William Gibson, science fiction author extraordinaire. Very interesting. Wow. 
So we have here, we just set the goddamn box. I think my outfit, this gut keeps hanging out. That's because I'm sitting like this. I'm sitting like a fucking idiot, okay? In reality, it's like, I'm, I'm skinny right now, all right? I'm working it. Skinny. Dope. Oh, I'm so ashamed of my body at age 35. I have to prove you I'm skinny. Back to the unboxing. So the game, the game, great movie, David Fincher movie starring Michael Douglas. Patricia Arquette, if I'm not mistaken. Usually it has the little thing on the back that tells you. Let's see. Um, oh, Michael Douglas and Sean Penn. I don't see Patricia Arquette's name. Is it possible if she's not in it? I was almost sure she was. Anyhow, if you don't know the game, you should watch it. It's a great movie. And you know what? That's all you need to know. If you like Fight Club, if you like David Fincher movies, if you like great, fun, cool mysteries where we don't know what's going to happen next. What is that voice? I'll tell you what. I'm okay with the acting. I'm okay with the inauthenticity. I'm going to gussy it up a little bit for that camera. Yeah. Um, but... I'm not okay with I fucking hate that voice and the kind of people who do that. I can think of a few off the top of my head. I don't like it. So anyhow, so I'm wondering here, I assume this when it I didn't know this existed, first of all. Uh, I'm gonna assume this is the movie adapted into no novel form, 1997. Who, who wrote it? A novel by Jeff Rovin. There we go. A novel by Jeff Rovin based on the film written by those two people whose names are not gonna... Okay, John Brancato, Michael Ferris. Was that important? Do we care about them now? I'm sure they have careers and have earned their, their titles, but... Uh, this is interesting to me that they even did this because this is a thing they do with kids' book, uh, movies, typically. Like, in fact, I just had a copy of Adam's Family Values. Uh, yes, the movie uh, turned into a book, uh, a new children's book based on the, the smash hit movie was what, what were those movies smash hits like adam's family adam's family values brady bunch stuff how big were they when they came out did they flop were they successes did they make money did people care about them i mean my, I, I didn't see any of them in theaters because i wasn't really allowed to because uh, they were bad uh pg-13 i wasn't allowed to see for a very long time but I, I'm aware of those franchises from watching. Do I have to hold the book anymore? You saw the game already. Uh, I like it, Ono. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm aware of them from watching television. I mean, fucking HBO used to play those things all the time. And the Brady Bunch movies were fun. There's two of them, right? A very Brady movie or a Brady Bunch movie, a very Brady sequel. They love it, just like Edward Scissorhands. They probably borrowed it from Edward Scissorhands. They got that neighbor who's kind of hot but kind of not, and she was just trying to fuck all the young guys. They were a slut. Um, should I be slut shaming her? I mean, that's sorry. That's the way the character is portrayed. They're like married and stuff, and they're always trying to fuck you. I think her husband in the Brady Bunch movie is Jeffrey Jones, convicted pedophile actor Jeffrey Jones. Which, by the way, I was saying that I was talking to someone the other day, and I we were talking about Jeffrey Jones, and I found myself saying the convicted pedophile, and it's like, am I a me too? Flapper? Am I flapping my job about me too? I guess it's just interesting to me. It's like not so interesting to be like Harvey Weinstein or this guy, that guy, Woody Allen. Sorry, I stand by Woody Allen. His work, his personal life, no comment. His work's great. Undisputed. Undisputed master of his craft. Um, and I will gladly still watch his movies despite what atrocities he may or may not have committed in his personal life. It's always ambiguous. Isn't it always a little bit ambiguous? It's like, they did this and they did that. Well, what about this? You can't say that. <laughs> right? It's like, did he groom his daughter? Is that true? Mia Farrow, right? Is that true? There's got to be a hundred videos of people talking about Woody Allen. Um, but I feel like you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go all the way here. Okay. Forgive me. I'm not trying to make it racial. I don't think this is necessarily racial, but I would really love to know, you know, if the aliens come down and give grant us wisdom or if uh, I'm wrong and there is a God and one day I meet him and he tells you, here's all the answers to everything you wanted about. I would be like, play the fucking George Zimmerman Trayvon tape right the fuck now. Not because I was, uh, sorry to say, particularly interested in that or any other news event at the time, but just because we don't know. We have one guy's story about it and the other guy, unfortunately, is uh, dead and... Uh, I'd love to know what happened. So same thing with Woody Allen. I'd love to know 
I guess, you know what, people would probably, why am I a, a fucking diatribe about Trayvon Martin and Woody Allen? Is this, is this what it's come to? I'm trying to do an unboxing. I guess I haven't gotten camera and made a video in a while. By the way, about to hit 200 subscribers. I work with people who have a million subscribers. I produce music for them. I've worked with uh, YouTubers who had that, sometimes less, sometimes more. But 200 is a big deal for me. You know why? Because I'm doing my stupid thing and people are actually watching and you know, subscribing to it for various reasons. And that makes me so happy. It's real. It's not based on a gimmick. And I'm not, this is about me now. It's not about anybody else, but it's not based on a gimmick. It's not based on a trend. It's, it's real. It's, uh, this is what it is. It's me doing my stupid shit in these 200 people, almost 200, I'm at 190 something right now, who are watching it, really, they care. I mean, even if my videos only get 50 views. Back to the diatribe. I would just like to know. I'd like to know the truth about the Woody Allen, uh, Mia Farrow. I'd like to know the truth about Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman. And I know, again, people say you can read between the lines and essentially grasp what had happened in those situations. But you know what? I don't think so. I don't think you can, because essentially you're still just like pulling a, a, a something out of your ass and like making an assumption that may or may not be correct. And if it's if you're wrong about it, then you you've really painted these. I'm George Zimmerman, I'll leave out of it because maybe he he wasn't painted any kind of light that he didn't deserve. But uh, yeah, maybe these people are getting painted in lights that they don't deserve. Does that now? You're a rape apologist. I don't think so. Did I say I, I sympathize with the rapists and pedophiles? No, but if you cut that bit out of what I just said, you can now say, you could make that bit now. Don't do that. I mean, if you do it, I'll think it's funny and I'll appreciate it, but don't do that to me. Why, you know? Plus, I'll just be like, here's where you hold out of from context. But by then, you'll have ruined my career anyhow. Career. I don't have one. Um, all right, back to the goddamn unboxing. Here, let's go. Here we go. Wowie, wowie, wowie. I'm going to do these one at a time here. Johnny Mnemonic, the uh, famous... Yeah, it's, it's uh, infamous at least. Great dual dual layer DVD, two sided. Love it. Nice book. Dolph Lundgren is the uh, coat. The wow, Keanu Reeves and Dolph Lundgren. I didn't know that that was the uh, co star. In the second title line. Life is different in the 21st century, but dying is still the same. Uh, I've never watched this movie. I know her. I can't remember what from. Pretty cool book. Wow, it's got Ice Cube. Do you see this picture of Ice Cube? Or Ice T, sorry. See this picture of Ice T looking the way he does? Wow. A pulse pounding cyber slam, according to Mike McKay from WBTV CBS Charlotte. Um, Johnny Mnemonic, what can I say? I've never seen it. I've always been vaguely interested. If I'm not, if I'm recalling, it's not particularly good, and that's why I didn't finish it. Sorry, I don't know. I'm still gonna watch it. I do have a DVD player. What a weird thing to say. I still have a CD player, I still have a DVD player. Yes, I crossed over to Spotify, but uh, yeah, Ice T, Dina Miller, and Henry Rollins. It says so right in the back. That's interesting. He was so hot during this time. I don't mean sexy. Henry Rollins in night year 1997. He was using the chase. Black Flag had ended. He had Rollins band. He had that big hit, low self, a low self opinion. He's putting out these really incredible records. The, to me, the two best ones, of course, are Lifetime and Hard Volume. Hard volume is, wow. Those are great records. The other ones, there's nothing wrong with them and I've listened to them. There is some great stuff. Even later, like the, the album with Illuminated. Illuminator? Illuminated? Um, Get Some Go Again. And Get Some Go Again is a great song. Now we're talking about Henry Rollins' catalog, I guess. The one with the skull on the cover is really good. The one with the sun on the cover that has low self-opinion doesn't really pop my top. But So Rollins plays, I believe, a, a doctor scientist in this movie. And of course, his joke, he always tells people, ever, ever the modest Henry Rollins, he always tells people that he's not an actor and he keeps telling people, but nobody listens, so they keep casting him. But 1997, he was hot during this time. He was in vogue and he was everywhere. Um, I was 12 years old. Um, Johnny Mnemonic, great, I'm gonna watch it. Like, I'm gonna actually watch it. Okay, here's something I, feeling so light the dvd is so cheap and i'm not complaining oh no uh, again oh no is who sent me this box of stuff this dvd case was so cheap i wasn't even sure if the dvd was in there but i checked and it is okay how interesting this is so frank i'm gonna guess this is uh british in some capacity because it's starring damiel gleason Domnal? i've always called him damiel i think it is damiel uh, and um, michael fassbender 
filmed by Lenny Abrams, Abrams, Abramson, Mark Abramson, are they related? Weird and wonderful, bonkers and brilliant. Michael Fassbender stars as a Frank, a genius rock musician who performs wearing a fake giant head that he never removes. Things get rocky between his protective bandmate, Clary, Clara, Maggie Gyllenhaal, a newcomer, or John, Daniel Gleason, quotes, wrong thing, I know, sorry, you, you got what I was getting at, who is convinced they're meant for stardom. The band lands their biggest gig, but are they ready? It is the world. Sounds great. I love all these actors. Maggie Gyllenhaal, whatever. She looks like a fucking teardrop. We all know it. She's fine in some stuff. I've never, I've just never been like enraptured by her. Michael Fassbender is uh, brilliant. Love him. Love Daniel Gleason. Those are both some sexy. Uh, Daniel Gleason is British. Michael Fassbender is German. And you know, Daniel Gleason, sometimes he looks okay, like in The Revenant, he looks really hot. Yeah, I'm saying it. Don't. You gave your faggot. No, shut up. We're not past that. Come on. 2020, baby. Okay, oh, no homo, bro. Michael Fassbender is really good looking. It's like, you know what? You sound ridiculous when you say that. Michael Fassbender is a babe, okay? Look, we all know it. Michael Fassbender, ask any girl. He's a really good looking guy. So, anyhow, Frank, never heard of this. I'm curious of the vintage. I'm going to guess 2015. 2013, I wasn't far off. It was based on almost nothing. I just, I just made it up. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Hot Wheels. Some of the stuff I wonder, is Ono cleaning out his basement or is he, I hope he didn't spend money on any of this. He did spend money on the shipping and it wasn't cheap. It was, hmm, I thought it said on there. I thought it was like $15. Maybe I made that up. So we have a Hot Wheels. I always got to remember to show it to the camera. We have a Hot Wheels, um, Fantastic Skeletor, Masters of the Universe. Masters of the Universe, I did see on and off as a kid. It was a tad before my time, and I certainly was not allowed to watch it. Um, but I know about it, and more than anything, I know about how it was essentially just a commercial for all these toys, and they just made loads of fucking money, and the cartoon was garbage. But uh, I'm interested. I know about Skeletor, and ooh, it's that other girl, I can't remember. But I like Hot Wheels, I like miniature cars, they're fun. I like toys, I'm a fucking idiot. Man-child, I'm not really... Right next item, wow. Not sure what this is. It says Power Rangers Unite. Adult collectible, not a toy. So that indicates to me, oh, I was just about to say, it either came from a loot crate, and here you can see loot crate exclusive. So originally it came from a loot crate. Whether it came, uh, whether, just kidding. Don't do that, I would never. You know what, people always wanna know. This video is long. So if you're watching it, bless your heart. I would never kill myself. You know how they like to say that? If you would get suicided, I would never kill myself. Just because I would never do that to people in my life. And it's too scary. It's, it's too difficult to do. That's Thomas Ligotti. One of his prime arguments is that suicide is such an unfair avenue to be forced to take in his brilliant book, uh, The Conspiracy Against the Human Race, where he's arguing that uh, procreation is unethical and that we should stop doing it. Um, and he's not wrong, man. It's, it is, you know, the argument is you, you didn't ask to be born, you were born, and you're just fucking stuck here unless you want to take this extraordinarily difficult to the point of where it was, it's almost the last thing anybody would do to have to escape misery. Anyhow, I would never do it. Mark my words. If you ever find me suicide with my dick in my hands, it was a self asphyxiation. That means I found out too much and he suicided me. But I wonder if people say that and then just kill themselves anyway. Not me, I would not. Yo, know, you can't talk about suicide when we're going to be committed. You made a song where you talked about how sad and depressed you were. It's like, yeah, I'm a fucking artist. You make songs about how sad and depressed you are. Wow, this is fucking cool. Oh, I hate the big heads. You know those big head fucking things? I hate them. This is so cool, though. This is, sorry to say, the packaging is just going right in the garbage. Not, it's got the little six triceratops on it. This is more... This is more um, acceptable to me than a bobblehead or those pop figurines. You see how I'm getting serious? Oh no, anybody, do not ever send me a pop figurine. If you do, plan for it to get melted and destroyed. I fucking hate the way those things that look. They're not fun, they're not funny, they're not cute. And you, they're, they're ubiquitous. You see them everywhere. You can't escape them and it's... <sighs> Every video game store, every media store. It's almost like a corporate joke. That's right. I think those pop figures, which just only slightly represents with a tiny body big head, 
I think those pop figures are legitimately some fucking weird corporate job where they were like, what about these? Are these going to hit? And then they found out that they hit and they were like, go, 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 go. Make 50 fucking billion of them of everything. License everything. Get it officially. Get a Rick and Morty. Get a sign that. Get a this. Get a that. And make a fucking billion of them. And make a I don't know if it's a fucking billion dollar industry. Those goddamn things, what are they? For a new one that's not something that anybody cares about, what are they like? 20 bucks, 15 bucks, 10 bucks? And they take up so much space and they keep them in the box. That is a phenomenon I have sheer disdain for. I, I almost would say I'm disgusted by it. Um, and I want, there's not a lot of things where I can't see the good in them in terms of, let's just say, collectibles, toys, and pop culture phenomena. It's like, oh yeah, okay, you know, you know not my thing, but I get it. Uh, those pop figurines, man. <laughs> Love this though. Despite the fact that it kind of reminds me of one. Here we have another Hot Wheels car, and this one is... Wow, this is a Back to the Future DeLorean. So, oh no, I appreciate the fact that you're not sending me bullshit Hot Wheels. If you did, that'd be fine. But how cool. You're sending me a DeLorean. Back to the Future Hot Wheels car. I hope you know these are coming out of the packaging too. In fact, just to prove it. Wait. How's the Back to the Future thing? Uh, I can do Indiana Jones right now. That's Star Wars. Is that Star Wars? I know it's not the main theme. I know it's not Darth Vader Vader's theme. Those are easy. I can sing those in our beat. Does that mean something? I'm proud that I can sing Star Wars. God, I've gotten wrong. Hmm, I don't think that's Star Wars, and I don't think it's Back to the Future. It sounds like it's a Spielberg property to me. I just can't think of it. Mark, are you watching this? Uh, oh no, you guys can probably call it in an instant. I'm almost thinking I, I know it more from the video game version of something, but it's a big one. It's it's not an Indiana Jones. Is it Indiana Jones? Okay, you know what? Let's get on with it. It'll come to me eventually. I can't sing the Back to the Future theme right now, which is embarrassing. I do love it though. Classic John Williams score. Let's bust out this fucking Masters of the Universe too. I hope you don't mind, Ono. I think I think you send these things to me and you don't give a shit what I do with them. I mean, I'm sure you're hoping that I read the books and in most cases I will, but I'm not gonna keep these cool ass things in the packaging because God damn, it's cool. Wow. All right, winding down here to what I believe are the last two items. Wowzers. This one looks so good in the packaging. Wowzers. Remember kids were saying, yikes, they still are. This one looks so cool in the packaging, and shit on me, I thought it was Wolverine. Well, is that a surprise that I thought it was fucking Wolverine since you have Hugh Jackman with the claws is the biggest thing on this package? But no, it's Gambit, who I'm wondering if Ono sent me Gambit because he could be he likes Gambit. It could be... He remembers from the last video when he gave me, I think, a Gambit card, and I said I used to have a crush on Gambit, which I absolutely did. Here, I mean, he's looking how he looks, you know? Let's go. Sorry again, I don't think this is intended to be in the packaging. If it is, oh no, you'll have to, you'll have to complain to me. For me, it's like, they're coming out of the back. Ooh, there's like a little, this is kind of cool. There's a little comic on the bottom. Let's check out the end of here. Uh, make it complicated. Just get this fucking thing out of here, Christ. Uh, his staff is like all bent. Is that what, does Gambit carry his staff? Uh, you gotta make sure you got Gambit's card. This is looking, this might be a little bit used anyhow. I ain't complaining, I'm just saying even more reason why I should take it out of the packaging. So we got Gambit here. Wow, he holds the cards. Ah, and the staff. Man, that's cool. And he's not as sexy as the Gambit who gets um, uh, illustrated. 
But why would he? I mean, they can only put so much. That's not true. They can put a lot of detail into action figures, but. I mean, I'm curious what was in the bottom here. I'm gonna guess it's a, oh no, it's not a comic. It's a little, an advertisement. Thank you for buying our product. Buy more. This is cool. This kind of shit, I can't keep though. I just, it's gotta go in recycling. Love the Gambit thing. Thank you for that. Oh, and I believe, yes, 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 we're to the last item here. And this is, this is feeling booky to me. Uh, let's take a look. Got a letter. Maybe I should have read this first. If so, don't put it in the bottom of the package. All right, I'm reading it. Hope this is okay, Ono. If I get to something that's funny or I think might be personal, I ain't gonna read it. 8-28-2020, so August 28th. It's taken me nearly a goddamn month to do this. I apologize. What's up, Peter? Excuse me, what up, Peter? Comics, good ones, photos. Edited an unfinished Alice in Wonderland story with photo. Toys, Gambit, open and enjoy if you like to waste free time boredom. Books, the game, a kid who grows into an accidental adult who overworks. Very good, uh, astute and concise description of the protagonist in the game, Michael Douglas's character. I couldn't have done it better myself. Neuromancer, cyberpunk for life. That's true, cyberpunk, uh, Neuromancer is a uh, quintessential cyberpunk uh, book, and I didn't mention that. Better than Johnny Mnemonic, the real cyberpunk story, Neuromancer. Shadowrun number 14, Nosferatu, cyberpunk pen, paper, and dice game. Interesting, so is Shadowrun related? Is Shadowrun the name of the board game or is it a cyber, I mean, there is a cyberpunk board game I'm aware of. So I'm aware of it because of this one, this one motherfucker who tried to give me fire one time. And I hate him, I hope he dies. Uh, oh, we gotta stay positive, don't say negative things. Stop it. I hope he fucking died, like truly. If you're, if you're watching this, I hope you fuck. I, I hope you die, and I hope your fucking life gets worse. It sounds bad, doesn't it? You know what, man? You're a fucking snake. Tried to get me fired from my goddamn job. Try to be buddy buddy with me, and then go behind my back and complain about me, and try to try to get me to lose my job. We all know. Don't fuck with Sony's family. Don't fuck with their girl, and don't get between them and their money. Don't don't fuck with their job. Don't fuck with their family. Don't fuck with their girl. Do not fuck with their job. You do that. You deserve whatever you, you're getting. Not gonna get it from me, but I wish you uh, an early death and much misery. Won't say your name. Okay, back to love. Jesus, it's getting so dark. But you know what, hey, people wrong you, you know. A Shadowrun turned into games and different versions. One on the SNES, so I was, I thought so. Another on Genesis, William Gibson calls Shadowrun. William Gibson Neuromancer meets J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. My Genesis Shadowrun review, and he puts a link in here. He's written a link. I may type that in. I mean, I prop. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. When I'm on Facebook, I'll ask you to email it to me. And then what is this? This is a picture. 2002 Bad Taste short story. It had strong, but it start. It had. I had a strong start, but it began to flutter. These are so Ono's doing some writing. No longer had started, so left unfinished. Okay, that's. Hey man, pretty eccentric, and I'm not judging you. I'm an eccentric guy myself. I tend to gravitate towards eccentric personalities. So it's no surprise that the way for Ono to tell me about the short story was to send a picture, a scan, what appears to be a scan on photo paper, which is a little uncommon these days. It's a scan on photo paper of a story that he was writing. Oh, and then that's it's stapled to a typed version of it. You know, you can't, you can't say this isn't pretty fucking cool. I'll read it right now, fuck it. Man, Alice came over today, but I was out of tea. Instead, we had macaroni and cheese. As soon as the clams were done, the doorbell rang. It was the walrus and the carpenter. They came in to say, hi. To make a long story short, Alice left my house with an empty stomach and the walrus was nailed to the ground. Well, it's funny. Alice is allergic to any bread or wheat. Let's just say the bottom of the food pyramid. <laughs> Funny. Uh, the one with about six to 11 servings, Alice is allergic to those. That's the food pyramid, okay. To top that off, she's a vegan, so all she eats are bean and corn. Wow, she sure farts a lot. It's sad, really. A nice looking girl that smells like ass. 
No wonder she had a drug addiction. So is this the case? So written in 2002, slightly edited in 2020. Interesting, Ono. I encourage you to do your writing. It's, it's quite something, man. I almost don't know what to say about that. It's funny, it's weird, it's cool. I love it. All right. We've got three comics here. I don't know if I've said this before, that I'm not a big comic guy. That's not ex entirely true. Because I've read most of Grant Morrison's work that's not Batman or superhero related, although you could certainly argue that Seaman and Animal Man and uh, Invinci Invisibles are superheroes, but you know what I mean, like mainstream superhero. So I read a lot of Grant Morrison stuff up until four or five years ago, I've read most of Ed Brubaker's stuff, loved it. Um, and there's a couple others, you know, your, your classics, your uh, Alan Moore's and your huh, East uh, Grant, Grant Ellis. Can't touch those guys, man. Those are like the big dick fucking daddies of the uh, comic book world in my eyes. Yeah, I know I'm missing a lot of groups. Brian Vaughn, too. Can't fuck with those. Although I did quit reading Saga, and I don't remember why. I think I lent my... And by the way, I, I was never buying comics. I was always buying trade paperbacks, so a collection of comics, because I thought of it more like a book, and I don't like the idea of having to buy each one and collect them. I want it all at once. I want one volume, right? Um, I lent somebody my Saga Volume 2, and the motherfucker had it forever. I hate... I do it, and I'll just keep doing it, because I never learn. I let people borrow shit that I shouldn't. Oh, you know, yeah, take this. Come on, please, please, please take it. What a fucking mistake. Talk about that was an error. We've got these comic books here at the end of the unboxing video. One's a Godzilla. It's in plastic. Does that mean it's extra special? I don't know. We got Deadpool's, Dracula's, Gauntlet. I don't particularly like the Deadpool character, but I'm open to reading it. It's Ryan Reynolds that makes me hate it. I've never seen the movies. I just hate that motherfucker. I hate the advertising campaigns. And then we have X-Force, which I have to say I'm not familiar with at all, and amazing on the back, we have a Tiger Electronic handheld game advertisement. And if, if you don't know about Tiger handheld games, I'm not gonna explain them, but you know what you should do? Go look up AVGN Tiger Handheld Electronic Games. Angry Video Game Nerd does a review of Tiger Electronic Games. Doesn't get any better than that. So, I'm, this is me signing out from the front at least. I'll, I'll show you some footage of how the area looks right now. And I'm going to get to clean up now. And I'll get to take all my, my makeup off my face. I'm in a new location. I'm in a new reality. And I've done the first unboxing video. And oh no. Thank you. I'm sitting like I'm like a binge over here. What's a binge I made it up? I just said it. Thank you so very much for sending me this oh no. Um, I don't know what else to say. It makes me happy that somebody took the time to send me all this stuff. It's super cool. Remember, if you send me stuff, I'll make an unboxing video. Can you hear the thing in my voice? It's kind of a lot of work. I like it, obviously. <laughs> don't let me fool you. Um, send me some shit, and I, as I've said, if you do send me actual literal shit, could be a dried up turd, could be a canister of diarrhea, I will make an unboxing video of it. Not to say I'm encouraging you to do that, I just want to be clear. Wow, what a, what a creepy thing to say. Send me some shit, so I'll make a video of it. Sounds like I'm just going to take it and jack off of it, obviously. Uh, it's not what I'll do. Is, is there somebody who would do that? With, I guess, yeah, sure there is. All right, unboxing video out. New York City, bye!